Hello and welcome back. In this video we're going to take a look at custom properties and custom properties let you add your own properties to various items such as uh, bodies, fixtures, joints, images and also to the world itself and then you can set those properties just like any other properties and export them to your own program. So let's uh, get started. Uh, in this video we'll, we'll take a look at creating and setting properties and then we'll take a look at a little example showing how they could be used uh, in a C++ program at least. So the most typical way you would add a custom property I think would be to right click in this area here and select new custom property and we are in body edit mode at the moment so by default the uh, class type is going to be selected as body. Uh, I think I will go into world mode. We don't have any bodies here, so I'll just go into world mode to show that we can also add custom properties to the world itself. So I'll start again. Custom property, right clicking in here, and so we can choose our class type there, one of those. And the properties available are integer, floating point, a string, text string, um, two-dimensional vector and boolean value. So I'll just stick with uh, the first one here, integer. And then we have a name and a display name. And these have two quite different roles. The name is, um, I'm going to call this the short name. And this is the most typically used name when you're exporting and this is the name that gets saved into the JSON file and it's also the name that gets used in the script inside the Rube program when you when you write a script you can access the property by this name so that means that there's a few rules we have to um, obey when we're selecting the name for this property so you can see them there it has to be alphanumeric only uh, or underbars and it's not allowed to start with a number so for example we could have we could call it ABC but we can't put a space in there so as soon as we try and do something that's not going to work the background of this input will go red to let us know so for example we we're not allowed to put a number at the beginning like that either so we have an integer here I'm just going to call this my int that's a short name and then <clears throat> the display name, this can be any text you like, so there's no restrictions on this, no restrictions on this. And that means you can also have this in uh, Chinese or Arabic or whatever other kind of language you want as well. And we can have symbols and um, spaces and all kinds of whatever you need. Uh, so I'll just call this my nice int. And then when we click OK here, we'll see we have property down here and the custom property is going to be uh, color coded in yellow and we can mouse over the property there just to see a few details about it and then we can just set this as we do with any other property so give that a value 20 of 5 and this is now attached to the world itself all right I'll just add one more here and let's uh, let's go with the vec Two, and this will be my my vec, my nice vec, and this is uh, this is a vector like, as we see at the top there, gravity is a vector. So this, if we try and put some text in here, it's going to say it's supposed to be two numbers separated by a comma. So we can do something like um, something like that. Okay, so that's uh, the basics of setting a property, and I'll just do a couple more. Uh, let's have a body in here, body with a circle fixture, like that. And then I'll add a custom property here, and I'll make this a, oops, I'll make this a boolean, and Let's say that this is a, a pickup that your character can 
run across and touch like some health pickup or um, coins or whatever something like that and this property uh, that we're going to have on this body is going to tell us if this thing should respawn or not in the game so I'm just going to give a short name there should respawn or something like that for the uh, long uh, display name and then this will show up as a a boolean checkbox here so we can check this and uncheck it and you'll note just if I undo that there of course these properties all undo and redo and if I undo again here you'll see that we can actually undo the addition of that property so just be careful with that if you're undoing and redoing you can actually undo and of course redo the addition and deletion of properties um, so yeah there's a little marker here on the side to show you that this property is actually unset at the moment so custom properties are slightly different to the other type of properties in that they can actually not exist at all if that makes sense um, so if we go back to the world for a minute I can actually delete this completely so that this property doesn't exist at all whereas most of the other normal properties they have to have some value alright uh, bodies okay alright back to my body okay let's say that this body should respawn and I'll do one more I'll go to fixtures and this fixture is going to have a custom property uh, string property and let's say that uh, when the player hits this it's going to make a noise or something like that sound um, and it's a coin and coins oh hang on a minute sound yep and this is a string so we'll say the sound is going to be a jingly sound for the coins or whatever <coughs> and then just go back to bodies for a second and I'll duplicate this body and we'll see that when I select each one of these we'll see that the um, custom properties that we've added have been duplicated and the values that we set in them have also been duplicated so if I go into fixtures mode for a second we should see both of these fixtures are now jingle and I can make this one clang or something like that so now we can see they each have a property of their own separate properties okay um, now just before we have a look at the JSON file there is another way you can add custom properties or manage custom properties and that is under the scene menu there's a scene settings dialog here this is a new addition in this uh, update and in here we can see all of the custom properties that exist in this scene so each scene has its own set of custom properties uh, so they all just pile into the same table here and you can sort them by whichever category you find convenient and then you can what do we got here sound uh, so you can select a property here and you can delete it and oops <laughs> that's not what I wanted delete that one and you can undo the deletions of these so if I undo two times to get those ones back and you the properties will be I mean the values of those properties will be undeleted as well they'll be restored rather um, and you can also change <coughs> the name and the short name of properties so oh something's not right there is it hmm oh okay looks like there's a bug there I'll have to fix that before I release darn um, that's what I wanted to do um, so you can change the short name and the display name uh, so let's call a sound file or something like that so now we should see the 
display name there change to sound file. Um, but as you'll notice there, you can't change the class or the type, you can just change the names of them. Okay, um, I also should just quickly look at what we can do in script with these properties. So I'll go into the world mode here where we had two properties there and this one was called my int and that one was called my vec. <coughs> so also in this update there is a new script type called world and we can get a reference to that like this. There's only one world so you always get the same thing when you do get world. And then we can do something like this, my int equals um, 30. So you can see now the reason why we needed to call, we needed to have the short name, a specific type of a name, but like we couldn't have spaces or anything in this one. That's because it's going to be um, used here as a variable in the script. So if I run this script now, we should see that the int value up here, whoops, changes to 30, like that, and of course we can un undo and redo the scripts as well. So you can access um, properties directly like that, and there are a huge number of functions that you can use to uh, find out what custom properties exist in each property and set them and get them and so on. Uh, that's uh, quite a detailed topic though, so I'll, I'll direct you to the the Rube script reference and the help for that uh, for now. Um, and if people want more descriptions of that or more tutorials or something, I think that would need to be a video all in itself. So for this video, let's uh, move on to taking a look at what happens to the exported JSON file as a result of these custom properties being added. So I'll just um, quick export this. I already have exported it to a file somewhere, so I I know that it's going to go to this file. Okay, so this is the file as it existed before we made these changes, and I'm just going to reload it here. Uh, okay, so now we have some bodies, and this is kind of awkward to look at, so I'm just going to copy that and throw it into this thing here, which is a nice clean way of uh, looking at JSON. Okay, so starting from the root of the exported JSON file we have the world and everything here looks pretty much the same as it did before except we have this one extra array property here which is custom properties and if we expand that we'll see two properties in here and they are like this so these obviously are the ones that we've set in our custom properties over here. And there's two properties, <laughs> the terminology is going to get confusing here, but this is one custom property and there are two properties inside here. Okay, So one of them will be called name and that's the short name. So um, yeah, the display name is basically only shown up here in the properties in the editor, properties panel everywhere else the short name is used. So that's a short name and the other property in here is going to be called either int, float, bool, vec2 or um, string, whatever the property type happens to be. And then the property will be one of those, um, whatever is applicable for that variable type. So down here we have my vec2 and then we have the uh, the actual value of that is in this property here and we can see the values there, uh, 3, 4. So then uh, if we look at our body that we had, oh we've got two bodies don't we? Okay so we'll look at one of these and we'll see the body has custom properties and this is exactly the same kind of format in here. It's an array and we had respawn true and then also if we look at the fixture it's exactly the same thing in here. We have custom properties. So because all of the custom properties are grouped together under this um, sub uh, what's the word sub object in in the JSON, that means you can give them 
uh, whatever names you like, you're not going to be colliding with names like the other names, density, friction, and so on. So you don't need to worry about what names you call them. Um, they can be anything you like. All right. Um, so <coughs> let's have a look at an example of using these, and we're going to look at the C++ example. But this example is has also been done for Java and JavaScript and also for the chipmunk example in the sample uh, sample loaders folder which is included with the trial version and you can also down that, download that separately uh, for the full version and here we have the example running it's pretty simple um, we just have a bunch of bodies here and they are moving as um, directed by some custom properties that have been given to them. So let's open that scene. Um, this one. Okay, so this is the scene here. And we can have a quick look and see what custom properties we have here. Um, we have four custom properties, they're all in the body class, three floats and a string. And we have um, the string is for a category, and then the other ones are for speed, vertical range, horizontal range. So these three properties here define how the bodies are going to move. <coughs> oh, and uh, yeah, when you mouse over these properties uh, you'll see right at the bottom of the tooltip there you'll see um, what properties exist in each of these items so let's uh, check this one out okay at the bottom here we have our custom properties uh, this particular body is in the category not wobbly and I think all the other ones are categorized as wobbly so they're going to be the ones that move around and then you can see we just have some uh, v various numbers set in there for horizontal range and speed and vertical range so if we go back here for a minute uh, let's uh, make this smaller uh, like that Okay, so this one at the top here <coughs> is the not wobbly one, and the other ones have been categorized as wobbly. And I think I need to. So let's see what we can do. Um, well, just very briefly, I'll select them all, and I'll say that the speed is zero for all of them and then if I export the scene I think uh, hold on uh, yeah <laughs> sorry I'm just trying to remember where this is supposed to go I think that's it there so if we yeah that's it okay so you can see here that the custom properties that we've added are dictating how these things move so I'll just undo that and quick export and run it again um, and we'll just focus on one of them maybe and we'll just play around with the custom properties here make the speed of uh, 5 maybe quick export and then restart so we've just slowed it down a bit and let's say we make the horizontal range uh, 0 and the vertical range 4 quick export and restart over here so now we've we've just using the custom properties to to make its movement different so this is quite a handy feature obviously you can add a whole bunch of custom properties and use them however you however you like so just to have a quick look at the source code of how that is used, 
um, I think this is going to be a pretty common usage so just look at it as an example uh, this is the uh, C++ version here obviously so we load in the world oops, from the JSON file and we do a bunch of stuff just sort of housekeeping for the test bed um, but for this example the stuff that we want to look at is oh goodness right here so there's two main things that you'll be doing probably one is to get a list of items in this case we're looking for bodies and you'll be searching for them by some custom property so previously all you could do was get bodies by name um, now you'll be able to do things like get bodies by custom string or by custom float or by custom int or whatever so there's a lot of functions um, to do that so you can have get images by custom bool or you can have get fixtures by custom string or whatever so whatever is appropriate um, you can all, all of those functions exist for you to search for the things that you need to use uh, in this case we're looking for bodies with the string property custom string property called category and we want it to be matching wobbly that's why when we had the uh, categories here this one here was not wobbly everybody else was wobbly so that just lets us find a subset of something in the scene to work with and we're putting it into this vector here wobbly bodies and then um, don't really need to pay too much attention to that part there the important bit is this this uh, three lines in the middle here and this just gives us a um, basic exa example of uh, getting the custom property values from an item so we use the JSON object there again and we do get custom float and then we pass the the uh, object that we're working with so in this case we're looking at bodies it's a b2 body object and we're looking for the property float floating point property called hos range horizontal range and the last parameter here is a default value so you don't set a default value into the JSON um, I thought that would be a little bit restricting because then it's kind of it's saved into that file and uh, you probably find it a little bit easier to be able to dictate what the default value should be at a later date after you load the file rather than have it fixed and sort of set in that file and a little bit harder to change so once again we have um, get custom float, get custom string, get custom bool, etc. Uh, all those function types there. Oh, uh, and the default value here is returned if the property does not exist. So if that property is actually has no value, then the default value will be returned here. Um, so I won't go into these details here, but basically we just put these values into a, a structure there and we store them and then later on in the step function uh, we go through the list of the bodies and we do this sort of sine and cosine thing here to make them wobble around and set the position but you knew that you knew that already right of course um, so I think that kind of covers it um, like I say there's a lot of script functions that you can use to do various things um, and all of these properties can be accessed from script set and you can also do everything that you can do in this dialog adding properties deleting changing the names you can also do that from script as well um, one other thing that was added in this update is this um, well this whole this whole dialog here is new um, so now you can 
save these two settings separately for each scene, whereas previously they were um, sort of fixed in the program itself. Um, yeah, I think that about does it for this video. Um, just in closing, I will point out the um, going on I think I'm using old an old help file here so <laughs> should have uh, checked that but if you get the new version there's a, a section in here called custom properties so you'll just need to uh, check that out sorry I have I have the old version here for some reason um, but if you need to know a little bit more details about the things that I've talked about in this video you can check the custom properties topic and the help here and also in the using exported data subtopic here each one of these supported loaders topics has a little bit added at the bottom explaining uh, kind of this sort of how you would use the source code to access things so uh, take a look at the help there and um, yeah, let me know if anything's confusing. Um, just give me a mail or say something on the forums. And thank you for watching.